Mm. That's good coffee. Hey, fellas. Welcome to part three of the TA-152 build. In this exciting episode, I get some paint on it. And uh, I don't really go in depth with how I paint it. Uh, I, I do show you how I use chipping fluid. And keep in mind, I'm not the best at it, it uh, chipping that way, but uh, I have done it a few times. <clears throat> I also show you how I paint the exhaust nozzles that uh, rusty speckled color with, uh, with acrylics. And you can do that a number of different ways. A lot of times I'll use uh, ammo MIG pigments and some pigment fixer, and that looks really good too. But I decided to go ahead and paint these before I do all my weathering, because I'm going to cover up a lot of them with uh, with my weathering and and uh, and oil paints and stuff. Now I got the decals on this morning, and they turn they're turning out pretty good. A couple of layer bubbles, but I'll fix them and uh, I'll get them all settled down before I put another clear coat on it. But you may notice it's got an unusual paint scheme. And this is actually a scheme that was used with the Falk Wolf 190. And uh, the owner and I had kind of settled on this. He likes to, he likes a little bit different camouflage schemes on his later World War II German aircraft. So this should be pretty cool. It's one of those things where you, I got to kind of get in my mind that it's not supposed to look really neat. So it's, it's kind of difficult for me because I like to be precise and neat and, you know, but, uh, these camouflage patterns are often almost looks like they're haphazardly done. So uh, anyway, I will quit yapping and let's get on with the video. All right, let's take a look at how I'm going to paint this. Now, as you can see, I've went ahead and I sprayed some natural metal finish. I think I used aluminum. And the natural metal finishes that I use are the AK Extreme Metal products. I really like them. There's some differing opinions, but I like them. I think they're... Uh, they're rock solid. They're easy to use. I've got some Alclad, but uh, I haven't gotten real familiar with those. I'm used to these, kind of like I'm used to Tamiya paint. So I know how these spray, and, and I like the finish that they produce. So what I've used is aluminum to spray along the wing root, and I'm going to do some chipping, but I'm going to use chipping fluid. Now, if you don't have chipping fluid, then you can use uh, hairspray. It works similar. Uh, the hairspray that I got, I don't think works as well as the uh, the ammo MIG chipping fluid that I have. But I'll show you how I do that. And on this particular plane, parts of it seem to be in natural metal finish and some of it's painted. So what I've went ahead and painted the bottom, I started off with my aluminum. And then I went with a dark aluminum and kind of sprayed right along here in certain areas along the panel lines and just kind of mixed it up a little bit. And then I took some uh, gun metal and sprayed some darker areas, some different panels, just to break it up. Kind of like what they have on the instruction sheet. Uh, and I've, I've also put a flat Tamiya clear coat on it. And I know when you spray flat on a uh, natural metal finish, it really dulls it down. That's kind of the look that I want to go for on here. And uh, I also want a protective layer. I could have sprayed a gloss coat, but um, I really, I, I, since I'm going to be masking all this off, the, uh, the tape doesn't stick uh, as well to the, um, to the flat surface. So since I'm going, I want a grungy look anyway, and it's going to be easier to peel the tape up on a flat surface, I went ahead and, and uh, used a um, flat clear coat. Now, for these little access panels, because they're going to be partially showing a natural metal finish, I use my Cricut, which is a vinyl cutter. If you haven't, if you don't know what a Cricut is, uh, it's just like a crafter's type vinyl cutter. You can make t-shirts and stuff with it. I know anytime I mention the Cricut, a lot of people ask. So I'll uh, put a link to the video uh, that I've made that, I, that shows how I use it. But I've cut uh, consistent circles out, and I've went ahead and masked those off. And now I'll just take some Tamiya tape and I'll mask off the areas that are going to remain natural metal finish. And then I'll use, I'll spray the bottom first with this blue color that I've got mixed up. It's Tamiya. And then on the top, we're going to put a little bit different camouflage scheme than you typically see models done. Uh, the the, uh, the TA-152 models done. <clears throat> I'm going to paint it up like a yellow tin FW-190. And... The uh, the owner of this plane, I sent him a few pictures. He he likes a lot of different uh, 
uh, unusual camouflage scheme. So I sent him a few pictures of ones that I liked and and uh, he settled on this particular scheme. And I'll throw a couple pictures up so you can take a look at it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask this off and I'll spray the, uh, the bottom and the sides and then we'll use some chipping fluid. I'll show you how I apply it. You can apply it in a couple different ways. I'll show you how I do that and then uh, we'll get on with the, uh, the painting, the camouflage. See you in a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna do some chipping along the wing roots and it's about the only place I'm going to do chipping with this method. I may come along with a brush and do some minor, real small chips along other places. I don't know. We'll see. Now, in my other videos, you've seen where I've used uh, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner to soften the paint and chip away. Well, because I'm having different colors, I'm going to have a gray down and then greens and my khaki drab as a camouflage. If I were to use the Vallejo airbrush thinner for that to soften it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna mix all those paints together and I'll just have a globdy gloop mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Ammo Mig's chipping fluid. <clears throat> now, you can also use hairspray. I think I mentioned that before. But uh, I like this the best. And you can airbrush this on, but I like to brush paint it. And it's 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 like a water. It's it's almost the consistency of water. It's uh, just real thin stuff. I really don't know what's in it. It doesn't. It, it has a slight smell, but not anything. I can't really tell what's in it, and it doesn't say what's in it. So I just like painting it on. And this is actually my third coat. I've already painted on, brushed on two other coats. And I apparently there's a time limit that this works. So once I once this dries, then I'll start painting and then I'll wanna start chipping right after I get done painting. Now this says to use with acrylics. I think it probably works with other types of paints. I'm not sure. Uh, there are some other videos out there on it. Um, I don't use it that often, but uh, but when I do, I just use acrylics. I use my regular Tamiya paint. So I'm going to let this dry. Then I'll spray my, I'll paint my gray, then my camouflage. I'll freehand that. And then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you how to chip with this chipping fluid. And it's basically, I'm going to wet the area and start chipping with a brush and toothpick. And you'll see how, how it works out. Um, like I said, with my airbrush thinner, it would, it would mix all the paints. This basically just, I think the water activates this stuff so it doesn't stick. It doesn't actually dilute the paint or thin the paint. It just um, activates the, the, uh, the chipping fluid in between the paint layer and the base layer and allows you to just chip it up. So it doesn't actually thin the paint like the thinner would. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'll see you later. Okay, minute. now in this area, in this area is where I've applied the uh, chipping fluid. So I'm gonna just wet this down. And so I've got a couple coats. I tried to spray lightly, especially in this area, but we'll see how that works. So I'm just putting some water on here. And again, I don't do this that often, so, you know, you get to kind of <laughs> learn with me. Now, I've got, I've got these weathering brushes, and these are just old brushes that I like to use and for weathering, and they're really not good for much else. And I've got these real stiff bristled brushes, and, and these are good for this type of stuff. And I'm, hopefully this will seep through. Now I did use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, and uh, I don't I don't think that really has an effect on how well this chips. Okay, it is starting to chip. And hey, Kylie, I'm filming. My kid's starting to scream. 
Okay, so you can see how this just chips away just gradually. Oh my God, I don't know if you guys have girls, but they always fight in the morning. I'm gonna go beat him. I'm just gonna apply a little bit more water. Let that soak in, and I think once you start to chip, I think the water is able to get down under there a little bit better. So I think it does start to chip away a little bit faster. But I'm really gonna wear this area down. And I'm getting some nice chips. But I do wanna wear this down a lot. It could also come in here with a real fine sandpaper and kind of rub it away, and, and I may do that. It just depends on uh, how this turns out. So basically I'm just doing this where they would step and wear it away. I saw a couple pictures online of uh, a crew or pilot or something and they were standing on this portion right here one foot here and one foot here, and they were looking into the cockpit. Okay, now it's going to start coming away. Now see, I'm just, I got a lot of water on there. Now it's really ripping away. So I want to be kind of careful that I don't overdo it. I can always come back and, and repaint it, but I don't really want to have to do that. right there all right so that's what we got so far I'm gonna keep working at this but you get the idea and this just it uh, just takes a little bit of practice um, you know if you're not happy with it paint it over and, and redo it I think you probably have to put some more chipping fluid down if you're going to repaint it and then try to rechip it. But, And that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going to let this dry and see what it looks like and see if I need to come back and do any more. And then I'm going to come along here and do this side as well. So catch you in a bit. Alrighty, fellas. So I've got the insignias and uh, everything, everything painted on that I'm going to paint on. And again, I like to do that. Uh, rather than mess with the decals, obviously there's not going to be any carrier film when you do it this way. I am going to use decals for the number. The guy that I'm building this for wants a number 9 on it. And uh, I did a few little touch-ups. I set it aside, came back and looked at it, looked at my reference pictures again. And I think I've captured the look of what I was going for. Kind of a, almost like a haphazard, almost rush type camouflage. And uh, that seems to be the way the Germans did it back in um, WW2. You can see some of it's not well uh, saturated, and uh, and that's that's the way the reference pictures were. So I think I've got it just where I want it. I'm happy with my chipping, how that turned out. Now once I I put my uh, clear coats and stuff on this, it is going to dull it down, and that's okay. Not that big of a deal. I'm going to do a bunch of weathering, especially here in the exhaust areas. And I'm going to have some uh, exhaust uh, staining coming off along here so it's going to get all dirtied up anyway now what i want to touch on now are painting the exhaust uh, exhaust nozzles here and what i like to do is i usually like to paint these first i mean you can come back and use different pigments and and uh, uh, different techniques after you get done with everything <clears throat> but i'm going to go ahead and do it now now i've got these Ammo MIG Rust Effects Colors. These are acrylic, and I really like them. And it comes in this set, and I've got like five, six different uh, shades. 
I'm going to start with Shadow Rust. And this is going to be my base coat. And it's just basically a dark brown. But I like these. They're, uh, <laughs> they go on real smooth. And it's just going to be a matter of getting... And they pretty much flow. And they level out pretty good too. Now again, like I said, I'm going to be... Uh, weathering this area so this isn't that big of a deal but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you how I do this <laughs> now with this paint you can put it in here pretty thick and it's just gonna flow down and it does dry pretty quick so uh, this is acrylic I think this is like a water base it's not like Tamiya where it's alcohol based I'm going to start with my darker color. In this case, I'm choosing brown. There, are, I think there's a, a darker color than this, almost like a, a black brown. I'm just going to come in here. And with a little brush, I can squeeze in here where I need to get. So now I've got that side. It's kind of hard to get all this in camera. Let me get some of these paints out of the way. And then I'll come in here and I'll paint the bottom. And I put it on heavy enough where it just kind of flows down in there. And I can just get this pointy brush. And get all sides. And then I'll need to come in here. and get the inside of it. And again, you're probably not gonna see some of this. But I can use my brush, and I don't know if you can pick this up, the, the wing's probably in the way. But that's as simple as that to get my base, base coat down. Yep, still need to get the top. Okay, I'll get the other side, I'll let this dry, and then I'll show you what I do next. <clears throat> okay, so now what I've done is <clears throat> I got this color, uh, I think this is dark rust maybe, I don't know, but it's a little more orange. And I've got some here on my palette, and I'm taking a stiffer brush, and I'm just getting a, not a whole lot on there, and I'm just going to come along here. And normally I would do this with a sponge, but with a sponge I'm going to get stuff all over. I'm going to get it all over the side. So I can control it a little bit easier with this bristled brush. And again, I'm not caking it on there. But if you can see the difference, get a better look at it. I know my lighting's not the greatest. Get this out of the way. But it really does make a difference. <clears throat> and I'm just tapping it in there. And if you get too much, you can always come back and uh, add the other color, the, the base color, if it gets a little too too bright for you. I've already done this side, and we'll see. It looks a little too bright down here for my taste. So what I'll do is I'll just come back with the dark color on the same brush. And I'm just going to do the same thing. And it's going to tone it down. So these are really fun to play with uh, if, you, if you like to rust stuff up beforehand. Okay. You can also come in with a lighter color and hit some highlights. <clears throat> and you can mix it up. <clears throat> now I've got a slightly lighter brown than what I used. 
And then you can mix these colors together and come up with your own shade. So this is a slightly lighter brown. <clears throat> and say I'll, I'll just mix this up with some of this orange. And what I've found is <clears throat> the more, oh, yuck. Got a little bit of this on my paint job. Well, that's no bueno. I didn't get anywhere else. But you can just come in here with different shades and hit it, hit it. I sound like I'm from Chicago. I'm not from Chicago, fellas. And just play with it. The key to this is getting, not getting it uniform. Just get specks of color here and there, and I think that looks the best and most realistic. Now I can even come along with some really light stuff and do like some, maybe some dry brushing. So here I've got medium rust, which is almost like an orange yellow. And I can get uh, get a lot of this on my... I'm gonna get stuff all over this stupid plane. And I can just come in here with almost like a dry brush and just highlight it and bring out some of those that, that orange. I want a little more orange. Darn it. And this stuff does tend to dry pretty quick. I don't know if I'd call this a dry brush. <laughs> More like a, a, wet, a wet brush that I'm just kind of lightly hitting in spots. And it is one of the more difficult things to do this on camera. But this real light orange really does pop out. And this stuff will dry differently, dry a little more dull once it dries. So that's all there is to it. Now I can come along here and, and pop some black inside of there. I may wait and just do um, oil paint, put oil paint in there and that way I can wipe it away. But like I said, I'm gonna do a lot of weathering on this. So I just wanted to get a base down. of rusty color. Kind of like this bright orange. And that's all there is to it. Now once that's all, I get some oil paints on there, that'll look really good. So see you in a bit. Now before I put a clear coat on this, I am gonna add a little bit more chipping. And I'm gonna do that with a brush, and what I'm using is some Pale Blue Gray by Vallejo. Now I don't, when I do brush chipping, I'm not real good at it. And I don't do it on big areas. If I'm gonna do a big area chipping, I do like I showed you. But for like small areas like this, where I'm gonna be just showing where there'd be a little bit of chipping from opening up hatches and whatnot. I'll just brush brush it on. And I don't try to deliberately make 
chips. Ah, I almost lost my brush. I just lightly hold on to the, the brush and just kind of go along and and just make them, just kind of let the brush do the work. And that's how I do my brush chipping. <clears throat> Hopefully we can see that. This is one of those things where it can get, you start doing it and then you realize you've kind of overdone it. So you almost got to just take a step back and look and be like, okay, I need to quit. And, uh, you know, just one of those deals that do it, go slow and you you can definitely overdo it. Now I'm not chipping out. I didn't, like with this plane, I didn't want to do a whole bunch of chipping. I just wanted to to mainly get this chipped up because it saw a lot of wear and 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 then uh, all this other little stuff just just by brush. It's the easiest way to do it. Now I use this light gray color, and it doesn't have the bling that the aluminum color does. But like I said, once I once I throw a flat coat on here. You probably won't be able to tell the difference between this stuff and that stuff to be quite honest with you so basically just let the brush do the work keep your paint thin don't get a big gloop on there and just let the brush do the work just go along maybe hit a corner or two my kids are home from school and apparently she has a record player Simple as that, and just a little bit here and there, and it kind of br it brings it to life. So I'm gonna chip the, uh, create some chips in a couple other places, and then uh, I'm gonna get a clear coat on it. This should be the last part of this video, and I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.